How you doing guys? David Lewis from the Dublin Academy of Education here to give you a quick overview on Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. A lot of people think that Maths is a massive, massive, massive course but we're going to see here that we can break it down into bite-sized chunks that make it extremely manageable for us. And once we actually do that, we start to realise that many of the different parts overlap. In June, you're going to sit two papers, each worth 300 marks. Paper one before the weekend and paper two afterwards. So you've got a nice bit of time to revise over that weekend for paper two. Paper one we, we have as follows. We have algebra, arithmetic, functions, number patterns, the number, sets, distance, speed and time. And within them, they all have a couple of little ideas that we need to know. On paper two, we're talking about area and volume, geometry, probability, stats, the line, trigonometry. And then you've got your proofs and the constructions that a serious student, I would suggest, should learn off by heart. At the academy, what we do is we take this and break it into what's known as the five strands. So we give five handouts that have these topics intertwined. What we do, what I recommend our students to do is start at the very basic concepts. Because the only thing that gets harder once you understand basic concepts is the numbers and it just enlarges the idea a slight bit. But if you have those, that base can help push you through the exam no matter what grade you're going for. With that in mind, I've started here algebra because this is not the only thing that is massively important, but it's your base for your junior cert. If you have good algebra, it will actually pull you through the entire exam. Algebra not only appears here, it's gonna help us with functions, it's gonna help us with number patterns, sets, it's gonna come in with area and volume, it's gonna help us with the line and trigonometry, and so many different things that if we have a grasp of that, the actual ideas in those chapters seem really straightforward. So I would spend a serious amount of time on my strand four algebra. After you've gone from these basic concepts up to harder ideas, what I suggest my students to do is just attack exam question after exam question after exam question. Because you just really start to see that the ideas that they can ask start to repeat themselves. It's only slightly different numbers. On the days of the exam themselves, they're each worth 300 marks, but we won't know how many marks each question is actually worth. There is a myth that the longer the question, the longer suggested time they give you on the exam, the more marks there is, but that's actually not true. Because in fact, the examiner at the time of the exam doesn't know. The marking scheme changes after the exam is sit to ensure that approximately 10% of students get A's and so on and so on every single year. But what we can take advantage of is the fact that on the paper, they give us suggested time. Very often, we don't actually need that amount of time, but that is the maximum amount you should spend on that question. They've also added in 10 minutes at the end for you to revise your paper. There potentially could be, there generally is between 11 and 14 questions, but don't be surprised if they throw you a curveball. Makes no, absolutely no difference to us. We answer what's given to us because there is absolutely no choice for us. In our weekly grinds, we hand out those five strands with all the past paper questions on them, as well as solutions, not just answers, so you can work through step by step every past paper question on this Project Maths course in every single topic. We also have a banker's bible, which if you know off by heart, is a guaranteed percentage of your paper. At the academy, we are running weekly grinds, handing out these five strands and covering every single thing you would need to know. But we also run intensive Easter revision courses. If you want to find out more, check out our website.